So here I'm trying to show how I made some of these knobs. I uh, so I started out working on this nav knob, and I just counted how many little bumps I wanted on that knob, and then that's what I set my cylinder to, so that it had that many faces going around the cylinder. And then you see me just here getting it kind of positioned to my reference image. One thing to note when you're making knobs and things like this, I'm always deleting that back face. Uh, it's just a wasted uh, face that's on your item, so there's no need to keep it. So I'll, I always delete that for all my switches and everything. It seems like a small thing to do, but when you've got hundreds or uh, maybe even thousands of little knobs and switches and different items all throughout your aircraft those couple little faces that you delete can make a difference so here you see I I had the whole perimeter of faces selected and I extruded it but that just extrudes the whole cylinder so that doesn't work um, so what I do instead is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna select uh, every other face and uh, and then extrude so here you see where I'm starting to select every other face I'm noticing now that my recording software has not been recording uh, my mouse on the screen I apologize for that um, but hopefully you can still follow along so I've got um, every other face selected and then what I'm going to do is extrude and here I changed so I'm extruding them and then just scaling and that's along the median point of all those selected and then what I'll do is I'm gonna um, scale those down but before I do that so I started to but then I remembered so now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna select every other face that just that did not get extruded and so that's what you see me doing here and now I'm going to extrude those and this is how you manage to get all of those faces extruded out but you don't have the whole cylinder connected like we did when we selected all and extruded so now we've got all of our knobs and we just need to um, shrink them down to kind of a point and so we'll select all of those faces and so now we're gonna have all of those outer faces selected and we're gonna change our our edit um, thing instead of being a median point we'll change it to individual origins and so there when we scale it down now we're getting each individual face is getting scaled down on its own origin thus creating that pointed look that we need and then some of those scales I didn't restrict it on the Y so right there you just see me um, snapping all of that so that they're all on on the same Y plane so there I deleted that those back faces that were unneeded And so then here you see me selecting just that front section there and I, I selected it using vertices but you could also just switch to face mode and uh, just select that face. And now I'm just going to pull that out to create that little bit of taper that there is on these knobs.
So at this point I'm pretty happy with the initial knob and I'm going to start to duplicate it but before I duplicate it and use it for other knobs I want to UV unwrap so that I don't have to UV unwrap all of the other knobs. And for this because it's just a simple knob that's going to have basically one texture on it I'm not going to be repainting it for every individual airplane and all that. Um, I don't need to be terribly picky about my UV unwrapping so I'm just going to let Blender Smart unwrap it and just making sure that when it does unwrap it there isn't stretching which right now you see in that texture the light blue is stretching and we don't want that because then our textures will look all stretched and so uh, I believe what I ended up doing is I just marked a seam on every seam and then unwrapped it and there you see there's no no longer any stretching on that and that just makes it um, a lot cleaner when when you go to add your texture and then now that we've got this knob created and there's a bunch of knobs on this panel that are very much the same we're simply going to uh, shift D to duplicate that knob and then scale it down and, and put it in those different locations and uh, saves us from having to make the same knob over and over and over again. So I thought I'd also show this uh, heading knob as well. It just had a little bit of a unique shape to it. So I also uh, end up using the knob that I've already created and now I'm just going to edit it to fit what I need it to be. And so here I'm selecting some vertices of pieces that I just don't need. And so I'm going to select those and I'm just going to delete them away. Uh, so I'll delete those and then that remaining ring piece I'm just gonna pull that into place and so you see I've got it pulled into place but it's not lining up perfect so now I'm gonna go kind of vertice by vertice and move a little bit to get us a little closer but then it's still a little bit jagged and this is something that's right in front of us pretty much the whole time we're flying so we're gonna want it to look um, pretty we don't want it to look terribly jagged and so what I'll do after I get these in place is I'm gonna add a few loop cuts that will give me extra vertices to also uh, kind of strengthen that or, or um, smooth it out I guess is what, I, what I'm trying to say so here I'm just filling in those spaces because uh, all of those faces got deleted when we deleted our those ridges and so I'm gonna just fill those in real quick and then you'll see me add the loop cuts
here you see me selecting a few faces which I just want to uh, make sure they're going to be shaded smooth um, just to help the appearance of the switch so you don't see those individual faces. And now I've select, snapped the uh, cursor to that selected object, object that we just made. And now I'm, I'm adding a cylinder. You see I'm scaling it down. And so that, because this knob, it has a round base to it. And so we're going to add that round base. A really handy tool that I use is called Loop Tools. Um, You've probably seen it used quite a few times already in this tutorial series, and uh, that's what I'm going to use to join these two sections together. So right there, I just used the bridge function and joined the round to that odd shape. And it, it works pretty good most of the time you want to make sure that the number of vertices on each loop is the same or at least really close and then you'll get a good result if one of the loops has twice as many or five times as many vertices then your result might not be quite quite as good um, but it, it works really good especially for something complex like this it'd be a lot trickier to try and do that just by hand So I hope that was uh, helpful. Anyway, that's kind of how I go about making some of the knobs for my cockpits.